Uh, I bet we go to bed and not only Brandon Ayuk is a uh, is still a 49er. I bet nobody knew is a 49er. Because we're going to bed that early? <laughs> or are they trading out of the pick? Yeah, I think they're trading you out. You think they're trading back? I think they're trading back, 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 if, back. I think if they're going to trade, they're trading up. I don't think Why they'd trade they trade back. Why would they do that? To get a better player. Well, <laughs> but, Duh. Right, but... Like Tim just said, TK, if there's a player that they like yeah. further up the board... Then you you get aggressive and you you use another pick and you trade thirty one or you stockpile more picks. See, I, and I get think more cheap labor. They're not in a spot where they need more players. They need better players, but their roster is not one that is in need of ten new players. And a lot of these guys they draft aren't going to make the team. You have guys from last year's draft that didn't get a chance to make the team, and those are players that you're now going to look to elevate. As second year guys, the um, roster doesn't have a lot of holes. There are spots where you need upgrades, yeah, but you don't have a lot of spots where. No, but I'd argue this is a huge draft because if you're this kind of a team, fewer of your picks are. You're right, like because of what you're saying, you're not picking guys to come in and have a starting role right away. You're picking guys to start replacing people two and three years from now. And you got to get those guys right. Like, if, in, in other words, like, let's talk about wide receivers for a second. So, let's say you don't trade Brandon Ayuk, and you are going to end up keeping him. But you do acknowledge what, what I've said, what you've said, what Tim Kawakami literally just said, that it's probably Debo. It's probably Debo, and it's probably after the year. All right, well, then you need to grab that guy now. You need to grab that replacement now. I'd much rather have him have a year in the system. He'd probably get his feet wet. You work with him for a year, and then when you really need him to have a big role, uh, role he's a second-year player, not a rookie. I love that a lot more. That's what I would do. I'm not saying the Niners shouldn't draft a receiver or two. Yeah. I'm just saying I don't want whoever they draft to be a featured player in September. It's too, it's too soon. It could be, or it could be a guy who comes in and immediately pops and you don't miss Brandon Ayuk at all because you traded Brandon Ayuk and you got additional draft capital or you were able to move up in the first round or whatever you did with Brandon Ayuk, you were able to get a player to come in here who turned out to be a good receiver right away. It's not totally out of the question. And as you say, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to have a rookie come in and make an impact. And I look it's, at It's within the rules. It is. And I look at your receiver depth chart as it is now, and there's a guy you took two years ago in the third round, and you'd like to find out if he's really any good. And if he's not, then maybe you do draft somebody to take his place. You're not talking about Danny Gray. Danny again, Gray? What are, we, what are we doing with Danny Gray? Nothing. Then they'd cut him if they thought that there was nothing they'd do. No, because he's a, he's a depth piece. He's not a, like... Danny Gray has he's a depth piece. Yeah, so that's and and that's what he's going to be. He's not going to be a featured receiver. He's not going to be a featured receiver, but maybe you get him more time and you give him some actual looks. You drafted Ronnie Bell last year in the seventh round, yeah. and he's a guy. You got Chris Conley. You've got a lot of receivers who are on your team. Right, <laughs> the fact. Uh, what do you like about the receivers? Well, they're on the team. They got so uniforms. That's that's exciting. Helmets and everything. Numbers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Contracts. Sweet. Yeah. You look I, across I, their roster though, and you have a lot of depth at a lot of positions. So for me, it's not about stockpiling more picks. Maybe you can get picks for next year. For me, I'd be more interested in trading up and you know, taking some of these picks that you already have. And combining them and move up, and that way you get a better player. Yeah, but again, I mean, it's got to be, that's more complex than you're making it sound, I think, because number one, again, with any pick, you don't know what you're getting. And number two, that's all based on their grades. Like, I thought it was really interesting yesterday when John Lynch said, we got 22 guys with first round grades. With the gold helmet designation? Yeah, 22 guys. Okay, so. All right, you're the 31st pick. You get to the 27th pick, and you're like, "There's only one of them left, and we really, really want him." It's good that that's 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 our plan. Then yeah, sure, do something, give up a fifth rounder, and move up four spots, 
and and grab your guy. But uh, you're not going to bend over backwards. They're not going to move up far, I don't think. I mean, sure, maybe there's an Ayuk situation that, that pops up. But I, I think equally as likely that those 22 first-round grades, maybe they're gone, and you're sitting there at number 31, and you're like, we got a bunch of dudes who we, all, we, we still really like, but we think they're going to be available in another 15 picks or 20 picks or whatever. So let's move back a little bit. Let's move back. I mean, I, that to me is always a power position, what you're describing, which is that the 49ers aren't freaking out for any particular need. I might argue that an offensive tackle they are, but they're not. It, it's not like, oh, my God, we've got we, we don't need a quarterback. You don't right. need a starting running back, all of these things. That's a powerful position to move back if you get to a certain slot in the draft and you're like, this is not going to hurt us to move down a few picks and we can stockpile another player or two in the process. Yeah, and that that is a, a thought because being at 31 is actually a coveted spot for any team behind you who wants a quarterback. Because as you mentioned, if you draft a, any player in the first round, you get four years and you get that fifth-year option. So. If one of these quarterbacks, if it's Penix who falls toward the end of the first round yep, yep, and there's a yep. team with, with their eye on moving up to get the quarterback and to get that first round control, then 31 becomes a coveted spot for a team that maybe is sitting at 38 or 39. So if the Niners don't have any player that they absolutely love still available, yeah, then you can go ahead and move back. Maybe you pick up a third next year. You move back eight spots and you get a third for next year or something, and then you are able to stockpile picks for the future. Before we go to the phones, did you also catch what Tim said about Debo Samuel two years ago? Said that he thinks that the 49ers were more open to dealing Debo yeah. two years ago before the contract than they were Brandon now. Like that was super interesting. Um, here it is Tim Kawakami right here with us on uh, Withered and Dibs. They came pretty close to trading Debo two years ago, and they didn't. In fact, I would say they probably were more willing to trade Debo Samuel two years ago after a monster season, you know, one of Kyle Shanahan's favorite players, than they are now with Ayuk. Although, I, you know, the more you listen, the more you, okay, maybe they are pretty close, huh. or at least willing to talk on Ayuk. Sorry that I made a big noise in the middle of your <laughs> sound bite there, Grandy. My bad. But it was interesting. Huh. Really? Yeah. Because the way they spoke, remember, we even played it the other day. John Lynch was, I can't imagine not wanting this guy on the team. Yet, they came closer to and were more open to trading Debo then than they are Brandon now. I think that speaks volumes about how they feel about Ayuk. And I just, I don't know, man, that's the way I live my life. You, you feel like that about something or someone, don't you dare let that thing go. Don't let it go. You're dating an eight, but you have a, your eyes on a nine. You trade that eight. You go for that nine. He ain't no eight. He's not an eight. Ayuk? That's not He's an eight. Seven and a half. Get out of here. He'd be crazy. With a good personality <laughs> and a nice smile. <laughs> he seems like he does have he a, does a, seem a, like a good personality. He does seem like a great guy. And, and I, I'll give you this, the intangible part of it, the growth he's shown, the locker room presence, the person he is. We talked already about his draft class with Henry Ruggs, and you know I'm not making light of the mistake he made, but that is something that you know you you obviously can't even fathom with one of your players. Yeah. And yeah. you know Brandon Ayuk's not out there in the streets, and you know Henry Ruggs was involved in an alcohol-related vehicular manslaughter, and now he's in prison. Correct. So, and you know other players have been involved in other things, and you know the Niners I think have done a good job of getting away from guys with questionable character. And and then Ruben Foster's a guy they yes. moved up to trade to draft. And, yes. And that was a problem. And 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 there's also then the much less dramatic he did not very good. Jalen Rager right. and, and and Jerry Judy. Like just not all that good. So um these things can go a thousand directions, but what you're talking about, the locker room presence, the head screwed on straight, the downfield blocking, the understanding of the scheme the ability to put up 1,300 yards when you only threw them. Always live in the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Okay, Larry, your turn. Yeah, you guys do a great job. I have a couple quick questions. Um, you know, um, Steiny and Guru got this thing. They said, well, why do... Why, does, why did this guy think that, um, that the 49ers lost the Super Bowl? 
And I thought it was pretty obvious that the announcer said, hey, the coach had a play that he hadn't used all day, and he used it two or three weeks ago. And so this it was kind of a trick play. And so it worked. And so the coach won that game. It had nothing to do about any of the other players. It's the coach. You're talking about Andy Reid? Yeah. I mean, Larry, why would you play? why would you whittle that entire four-hour story down to one play? There's a billion other things that happened that day. Yeah, but that one play is what won the game. No, it was just the last play. I mean, why couldn't I? Well, the last play. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, sudden death. But the 49ers could have stopped them before that play. I don't well, know, man. I just don't look at it that way. I never get to the end of a game and think that everything happened on one play. That was the last play. You're right about that. I just figured that's why you pay people like Steve Kerr $35 million. You pay the coach to make those decisions in key minutes, and that's why you pay yeah, those guys to big buckets. But, but, Larry, like the players need to execute the play. Like, what if I said this? Um, the play that, that, that led to the 49ers having to kick a field goal in overtime was a beautifully schemed play by Kyle Shanahan. Brandon Ayuk was by himself in the end zone. It was beautifully schemed. It was not beautifully blocked, right. but it was beautifully schemed. One of their offensive linemen went the wrong way. You lose. That could have happened to a Chief. It didn't. They got another ring. Yeah. So Spencer Burford I, uh, went the wrong way. Yeah. Like, I just, I, I don't know. The whole one play, one person thing is just not for me. Especially when it comes to the scheme. And like you said, there are plays that both sides schemed well that didn't execute and other plays that were executed that probably weren't schemed that well. It's football. When you get into a full game, five quarters, a full overtime, and it comes down to just a couple of plays and a couple of moments, hard to say that one guy outcoached the other guy. Um, Willard and Dib, let's keep going on the phones. Rod in Vallejo. Hi, Rob. What are you doing? Show, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, thank you. A little bit off the topic, but I'm just curious. Do you th do you think one of the NFL teams will risk picking up Burns of North Carolina State, the big center, and give him a shot at right tackle? He's really light on his feet. You're talking about the he's kid, the, the kid the that NBA. play the kid that plays basketball, also. Yes, and he's he's not going to make it in the NBA. Well, right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Well, I, I mean, I, like, I have no idea if someone's going to take a flyer on this one. Why? You like him, Rod? I think he's, uh, I don't know if he played football in high school, but if he, if he's tough enough, I think he would be a, uh, a, a risk, uh, looking at, at right tackle. Yeah. I mean, uh, like Rod, like with all due respect, I got no idea. The kid barely played football. I know he's built like a football player. And so, you know, you could take a flyer on him in the seventh round. You could do the whole undrafted thing, bring him in, take well, a look at him. But, I mean, I'm not putting any stock in the guy, that's for sure. He was asked about his uh, interest level before they took on <laughs> Purdue. What's your interest level in being drafted in the NFL? What do you say? Zero. Okay. I love that. I like the pick. Zero. Yes. <laughs> I like the pick. And the kid's got... He's got a chance to be a pro basketball player. I don't know about in the NBA, but I don't know, man. If you look at the tra uh, trajectory of his college career, he's gotten a whole lot better, and he's got some skills. I know he's a big guy he's in a, a small big man's boy. league, but <laughs> he's a big, big boy. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look, the funny six thing, nine two seventy five is what he's listed. The at. funny thing about that answer that you just read. The funny thing about that is, is if you talk to a lot of like NFL coaches, one thing that they talk about in terms of what they look for in a player is not something that we think much about because we're just doing the we're just doing what we do we right. watch the TV and um, you know we play fantasy football and we root for our team um, but one thing I know coaches really look for is and sometimes it's hard to tell but does he love football because football hurts like hell. Like, it hurts so bad, and it is it is not pleasant. It's fun. It, I'm not saying it's not fun, but the process. Do you remember what TJ just talked to us about just this the other day? Say. The process that you have to go through to succeed at a high level in the NFL 
is incredibly painful and incredibly difficult and unpleasant at times. Yep. And so if you're looking at a prospect and he's like, yeah, I'm not really into it, I mean, that is that is the... The ultimate red flag. That is the ultimate yep. red flag. No doubt. No doubt. So, and out. TJ mentioned it with Brandon about, you know, all y'all, you, you have no idea the amount of work it takes to be good in this league, the league that has a 100% injury rate. And so even when you don't feel like going in there and putting in the work, you got to get up and put in the work and you're in the weight room and you're getting the massage and you're on the track and you're doing the running and all the rest of it. And that's every single day of your life. And Brandon Ayuk after the Super Bowl, he was in his locker. You could see the emotions he after the pain, loss. Man. Yep. He was in agony and he probably took a day, maybe two and felt bad about himself and then he's back in the in the lab, as the goo would say. And these guys put in an unbelievable amount of work to earn that money that they all get. Um, gosh, this thing, Tim Kalkami just said it's going to be dramatic. I wonder if you feel the same way I do. Let me run through some some comments real quick. The draft is twenty three hours and fifty four minutes away. Do 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 do. I can't do it. Better than Lucas. That's what I want to do. There we go. Got it. All right. Uh, Memory, memory, gone. Anyway, (laughs) um, the sound of the people does not sound like the percentage they guess. Does that make sense? Every single person that we've talked to, that we've read, everyone guesses that Brandon Ayuk is going to be on the 49ers after tomorrow. Above 50-50. Every single person. (laughs) Yet they all talk like he's gone. I mean, here's what I mean by that. Every single person, from Mike Silver's article to to Tim Kawakami saying this. The Fortnite's are positioning themselves around the league that they could trade Ayuk. Maybe that's the way to get the best trade offer. Maybe you put a scare in Ayuk. I don't know. That's how they're positioning it, in, in the way I've heard. And I think Ayuk can't this position. Like, yeah, fine, trade us. We're going to go somewhere we'll, that will pass. We just want to get what's right. Both sides, maybe it's a stare down. Maybe it's a game of chicken. But you know what? Games of chicken sometimes end up in crashes. So uh, I... I'm going to wait. I'm going to, it's going to be very dramatic. I guess there's a potential they could even do it the next day for a second round pick. I think that would be silly. I think Brandon Ayuk should, if you're going to trade him, you got to get a really good first round pick and get a receiver that you know can plug right in there. Cause if they trade him for a second round pick, boy, I, I think they really take a step backwards in this quest to, to win a Super Bowl. Okay. So listen to that. They're positioning themselves around the league to trade Brandon Ayuk. Ian Rappaport. I would say this pretty confidently. Whatever the 49ers will pay Brandon Ayuk, who they really, really like as a player who they developed all the way through, I wouldn't be surprised as a team that's willing to pay him more. That's actually not really the question. The question really is, does Brandon Ayuk want to stay in San Francisco with a team that's awesome and will probably be very good for a long time? Are they going to pay him the most in the NFL? Maybe not. They got a good team. They want to keep it together. But would it be enough to keep them? I'm kind of with you. I'm leaning more as of right now of him potentially staying. But this story has not yet been written fully. Okay. So once again, everybody's like, yeah, I'm leaning that Brandon Ayuk will stay. But I can tell you that right now around league circles, these conversations are happening. And Tim Kawakami's final word that he used was this is going to be dramatic. Dramatic. Yes, absolutely dramatic, especially when you get into certain spots in the draft, certain touch points where there are teams that have been either rumored or connected to Brandon Ayuk or teams that we think might have a wide receiver need. And so as you get to those spots, it's an inflection point, and we'll all collectively hold our breath. And when Roger Goodell sashays up and we hear that chime, that's not bad. Yeah, it's, you know, so far I'm in second place. Anyway, go ahead. The chime comes out, and Roger Goodell steps up. And with the 12th pick, there's been a trade. There's been a trade. <gasps> <laughs> and a collective dance. <laughs> They're not moving up to 12. And They're not moving up to 12. With the fifth pick, and I'm moving the up Chargers have traded the pick. Good Lord. To the Niners. They're not doing that. For Brandon Ayuk. 
Yeah, 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 what do we need to do to get Rap Sheet to stop calling him Brandon Ayuk? He's a Poughkeepsie kid. What the hell is happening? Pajowski. I mean, 1,300 uh, yards. <laughs> Come on, forget about well, how many Pop yards Minsky. do you need for someone to pronounce your 1500. name correctly? 1,500.